Hey, what's up, YouTube? You're with Got That Funk, and this is a second video response to Mr. Repsion and his video dealing with resentment. Uh, Daniel, I apologize. I just rewatched your video, and I now remember what I had forgotten before, which was that uh, much of your video was talking about the resentment that you feel about your religious indoctrination as you were growing up, and you wanted to talk about resentment in a more general sense rather than just about your incident with the woman last year. So that's what this video is about, and, uh, and I hope it doesn't drag on too long. I apologize to my viewers as well if uh, you're not really interested in hearing stories about my personal life and my childhood and so on, because that's what this is going to be for the most part. And uh, if that's the case, if you're not really interested in hearing about it, I don't blame you, man. Go back to the sub page and watch something more compelling. Anyway, uh, Daniel, I'm going to be addressing you directly for the rest of this video, and I beg your indulgence. Um, all right, I was luckier than you in this sense. I was not raised in a religious house, very far from it. Uh, religion wasn't even mentioned in my home. Uh, but. You know, I was raised by my, my mom and my stepdad. My mom and stepdad got married when I was five years old. He was uh, um, not in the military himself, but he had a very sort of militaristic attitude about how to uh, run, well, how, to, how, how he at, at work uh, in the fire department and also how he ran the household. Uh, so there was a lot of rules. It was extremely strict and there were harsh penalties if uh, you didn't follow the rules correctly. Also, it's worth mentioning, uh, when I was five, uh, um, when my mom and dad first got married, I was still a bedwetter at that age. And I think my dad sort of saw that as uh, a sign of weakness. I think he thought I was a bit of a sissy or something like that. I was also really scrawny, I mean really scrawny when I was a kid. So um, I think he never really thought of me as being a, you know, a tough kind of kid. And I think that's what he really wanted me to be, was more tough, a bit more macho, you know, the whole way uh, going through school. And for that matter, up until this present moment, I've still never been in a fight in my entire life. And I think uh, stuff like that sort of contributed to his idea that I just, you know, <laughs> wasn't really worthy of the title man when I grew up. Anyway, um, suffice to say that, uh, you know, my, my dad and I had different views about uh, how things ought to be and um, when uh, by the time I had reached double digits Daniel uh, it's fair to say that we hated each other passionately he didn't really make any secret about the fact that he held me in contempt and I kept on trying to win him over and trying to get him to like me but he just never would he constantly would uh, tell me that I couldn't do anything right and that I was really stupid and stuff like that now, I'm the kind of person, uh, uh, you know, I'm pretty bloody-minded, and you can call me lots of names, and some of them may or may not hurt my feelings, but one thing that will never hurt my feelings is when someone calls me stupid, because whatever else you can say about me, you cannot say that I'm stupid. I might sometimes be naive or gullible, uh, like anybody can be about certain issues, but at the end of the day, my brain works pretty well, and uh, I do tend to learn things pretty fast and retain information for a long time, so I think I'm intelligent. And when uh, he would tell me that I was stupid, I just didn't believe it, thank goodness. It didn't really sink in. But um, what did sink in was just how much animosity there was towards me from him. And I mean, by the time I was like 13, I used to literally lay around at night thinking, how can I kill him and get away with it? It was bad. We hated each other. Okay, I want to stress it. Um, and I resented him for not accepting me for the, the person who I was. I, I just didn't understand uh, why it mattered so much that I wasn't this sort of tough, macho-esque kind of kid. You know, that's how he would have wanted me to be. Why did it make a difference? You know, it didn't affect him either way, as far as I could tell at the time. Well, fast forward, Daniel, to when I was just about your age, maybe a bit older. I think I was 23, and I had moved away from home. I'd been out of the house for years by then, but uh, I moved away from my hometown. I got a job on a radio station about 65 miles away, so I used to be a DJ on the radio. So I left my family and all my friends and moved, uh, you know, an hour and a half's drive away or whatever. And um, that was a very lonely existence for me. I lived up there by myself with my cat 
and I didn't have any friends or family to talk to or do things with or hang out with or anything. So I had a lot of time to spend on my own at night uh, in introspection. And one night I was laying in bed, stroking my cat, thinking, why do me and dad hate each other so much still after all these years? I had been out of the house for five years by then, and he still hated my guts. He used to say that to me, uh, you know, about my, my, I was a DJ on the radio for fuck's sake. And he used to say to me, why don't you get a real job? You know, uh, I, I, was, I was proud to be a DJ on the radio. I, I'm still proud of it now. It was a great gig. Anyway, um, so I was going around in my head thinking, you know, why, why does he hate me? Why can't he just accept me for who I am? And then, Daniel, there was a little voice in the back of my head, which I like to think was my conscience, basically saying, Paul, you're being a hypocrite. And so once I let this sort of voice bubble up to the, the front of my consciousness, as it were, I realized that all my life I had held it against my dad, that he didn't accept me for who I am. He didn't acknowledge uh, my strength of character. He didn't acknowledge my tenacity or my uh, stamina. Um, all he did was criticize me for my lack of physical strength and uh, this idea that he had that I couldn't do anything right and I wasn't really tough and all that kind of crap. But um, you know what? I was being a hypocrite because for the whole time that he was my dad, that I lived at home, I was pissed off at him because you know he never played with me. To this day, we've never done anything, just the two of us, ever. Um, he never played with me, he never tried to teach me anything, never tried to say, for example, to teach me how to use tools or, or, or anything like that, how to build anything, nothing like that. Um, we virtually, the only time we interacted was when he told me what to do and gave me lots of chores to do. Uh, and that was a bit, or punished me. Um, and you know, when your interactions are limited to that kind of thing, it's natural, I think, that a little bit of animosity builds up. Anyway, so I realized that I was being a hypocrite because I was basically dissatisfied with him for not living up to this ideal of what I thought a dad should be. And he was dissatisfied with me because I didn't live up to what his ideal of what a, a son should be. So once I realized I was a hypocrite, I had this like, it's just, I, I, I literally, I felt like I'd woken up for the first time in my life. And I'm like, wow, I've, I've got to tell him. So the next day I, I called him up and I apologized to him for uh, holding it against him that he was the person who he was. I realized that he can't help who he is, um, that he's just a product of his environment and the way he was raised. And I love him for who he is, even if he doesn't love me for who I am. Uh, I know I said I know deep down you do love me. It's just sometimes it's a bit hard for you to hold on to that. And uh, the poor fucker was so dumbfounded by my candor. I think he didn't really know much of what to say. He basically thanked me and made an excuse why he had to get off the phone. Um, but I'll tell you what, man, I felt like a million times better. I felt like this huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders because I forgave my dad, and all I had to forgive him for, frankly was being a human being for not for each instance of everything that he ever did to me or anything like that no I just accepted that he's flawed I just accepted truly internally accepted that this is who he is and to a pretty high degree he literally can't help it so um, and don't get me wrong we can all we can all change we can all change but to expect someone change to change for your benefit is a bit unrealistic. Uh, people can only really change uh, if they want to. And if they don't want to or see the need to, they're not going to. It's really simple. Anyway, so I, I let my parents off the hook, both of them. Uh, you know, my mom for marrying my dad in the first place and my dad for all the nasty shit he said and did for the fucking 12, 13 years that he raised me. Um, and, you know, it was, there was lots of dark times, but I, I forgave him for the whole lot in one go. It was easy, frankly, once I realized that he was only being himself, and I was holding that against him. So, as regards your situation, it's, I hope, even easier for you to sort of take this kind of thing on board, because quite frankly, religious indoctrination is even worse. It's harder to break. 
I mean, both your parents, Daniel, uh, are only responding to everything that they've been told for decades. And they have invested an awful lot, what it sounds like from your videos, they've invested a lot of their personal identity into these beliefs. They're so intertwined that they probably don't even know how to untangle them even if they wanted to. And quite frankly, you shouldn't expect them to. You shouldn't even hope that they do for your benefit. You might want to hope that they do for their own benefit, and I'm sure that's where your head's at anyway. But at the end of the day, they are who they are, and you know for sure that at the core, they love you. And I'm absolutely sure that you love them back. That's all that really matters. The rest of it is fucking rubbish. And you need to just hold on to the good and let go of the bad which is the next thing I wanted to say to you. Um, Daniel, whether it's uh, resentment about one issue or another, um, or whatever, uh, when things happen to us that uh, hurt us, we have two choices, basically. We can take it on board and carry it around with us for the rest of our life, or we can let it go. And when I say that it makes it sound like letting it go is really easy and it's not it's it's like I said in my previous video it's a process but the negative things that happen to you in your life they can become like chains that you wear around your ankles and unless you take those chains off they accumulate and if you let enough of it accumulate over the course of your life you'll find that you can't really advance through life because you're carrying around so much rubbish you're dragging it around it's impeding your growth and keeping you from being the person you know you want to be. So I would strongly recommend, I mean, one of my, one of my uh, famous quotes, I've got lots of them, but one of my famous quotes is, you know, how many steps do you take before you remove a pebble from your shoe? And the metaphor is basically meant to imply that, you know, sometimes you have to stop what you're doing, deal with the problem before you carry on. Not every problem can be fixed on the hop. Sometimes you have to stop, deal with it, and then move on and you'll find that when you do move on without that pebble in your shoe to pardon the metaphor uh, it's more comfortable and you can go faster and you actually make up the time that it took to stop in the first place all right so again it's all about forgiveness man and it's a process don't expect to uh, have it happen to you in a single flash epiphany like it happened to me but I think honestly that if you begin the process and are sincere, you'll get there. It's really simple. All right. Thanks for watching this video, and um, I look forward to any comments that you might have. Until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.